las gente escogidas. Ok, Cansado, somos los reyes estoy. del mundo, somos dioses. Aunque a veces y si eres un, de este mundo un pueblo plantado, especial, a Dios, estoy. hermanos y hermanas. Ok, pero lo Um, so to not waste time, let's just get into it. The name of the title, uh, the, the name of the show today is "Keep the Law and Live." Keep the law and live, because the consensus out there is that um, we don't have to keep the law. We are under grace. Uh, just believe in the name of Jesus, and everything is going to be all right. So let's get to the Bible and see if that's true or false. Uh, let's go to uh, Proverbs 7 and 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 1. Ye, son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Uh-huh. Keep my commandments and live. The scriptures say what? Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. That's what's written in the Bible. You keep the commandments of God and you're going to have life. Read. And my law is the apple of thine eye. And my law as the apple of your eyes. And my law as the apple of your eyes. So now, would your eyes, you would protect your eyes at any cost. So now, if the Bible said keep my commandments and live, where do we get that we don't have to keep God's laws? It doesn't make sense. Let's go to Baruch real quick, 4 and 1. Because the Bible does not contradict itself. There's got to be a misunderstanding somewhere. And we will get to that verse that a lot of people misunderstand that says, what well, we don't have to keep God's laws. Go ahead, read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is what? This is the book of the commandments of God. This book is the book of the commandments of God. Read. And the law that endureth forever. How long the law endureth? That endures forever. So how can we read in the Bible that the law endures forever, but yet somebody going to teach you that there's no laws? Because think about this for a second. In every society on this planet, the governments have laws to govern themselves. Because anybody with sense will know that without laws, a, 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 a people cannot go on. And we gladly, willfully, with no issues, abide by what? The laws of the land. Because we understand we need laws to govern ourselves. So if mankind, who God created, have enough sense to keep the law, how is it that God does not have any law to govern his people? That makes no sense. Read it again from the top. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is the book of the commandments of God. In this book, in this Bible, you will find all that God has commanded us to do to have life. Read. And the law that endures forever. The law endures forever. It doesn't stop. So when a man is teaching you that God's laws is done away with, that man wants your soul. They want you to perish. They want you to die. Because we read before in Proverbs, it said, keep my commandments and live. Read. All that... All they that keep it shall come to life. Every man who keep God's laws is going to have life. Read. But such as leave it shall die. But if you leave God's laws, you're going to die. That's what the Bible says. Read. Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn thee, O Jacob. Go ahead. And take heed of it. Take heed. Take heed to what we're teaching you. Because we're reading it straight from the Bible. That's the book that gives you life. And it says, keep my commandments and live. Read. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, mm -hmm. that thou mayest be illuminated. Walk in the presence of the light that thou mayest be illuminated. Give me that in Proverbs. Let's see which light that we have to walk in the presence of that we have to be illuminated by. Because this whole book from Genesis to Revelation is a book of the law. It says, walk ye in the light so you may be illuminated. Because if we walk in the light, we're going to see what we need to do. But if we walk in the darkness, we're going to stumble and fall. 
Let's read that proverb. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is what? For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. Go ahead. And the law is light. The law is light. You need both the commandments and the, and the law to be able to see. Because like when you have a lamp, you put gas in it and then you light it up. The lamp does not give you light by itself. You follow? So read it again from the top. For the commandment is a lamp. Mm -hmm. And the law is light. And the law is light. Go ahead. And the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. The reproofs of instruction are the way to life. So what, what this Bible is about is a book of reproof. Because we are here to tell you what? Change your ways. The only thing that reproves you is the laws of God. Because without the laws of God, you wouldn't know what to do, what not to do. That's the thing. We grew up in a society where we just do whatever we want to do. But when you when you look at the laws of God, it's like, you know what? There's things we can do. There's things we cannot do. You understand? Give me that in um, uh, Sarat, our heritage. Give me that in Sarat because we lost our heritage. We were raised by what? No matter where you're from on this planet, you were raised by an oppressive uh, uh, um, people because we were slaves. We were colonized, and we were re-educated by those who oppress us. So when you look at society today, remove all the holidays that you are given. What is your heritage? What is your culture? Your culture is the Bible, but you don't know that. You got that for me? Read that. Sirach 1711. The Let's book go. of Sirach, ch chapter 17 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. He said, besides this, he gave them knowledge and the laws of life for an heritage. Our heritage is found in, is found in the Bible. Because the law, whatever the law tells you to do, that's the life you got to live. I'll show you something real quick. Uh, give me uh, Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah. Is it 10? Yep, Jeremiah 10 and 2. Because throughout our whole lives, we've been celebrating Christmas, correct? Like I said, remove all the holidays that we were given. We don't even know who we are. Christmas was given to us by our oppressors. But today we celebrated it gladly as though it's the birth of Christ. They say Christ was born on, on December 25th, and we got to celebrate his birthday. That's what they say, right? That's what churches teach us. Now, let's go to the Bible and see what the Bible teaches. So now you're going to decide whether you want to listen to men or you're going to listen to the Bible. Read that, Jeremiah 10 and 2. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, and verse 2. And if, if Christmas is the birth of Christ, I shouldn't be able to read it in the Old Testament unless it was prophesying about Christ going to be born on that day. So let's see what Jeremiah has to say about Christmas. Read. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So that's a warning. Remember it says the Lord is giving us a reproof. It said learn not. Do not learn the ways of the heathen. Heathen is the word for nations. Because every nation throughout this whole continent, they have their own culture. We are a people that don't have a culture. We just partake in whatever is presented before us. The Bible says, do not learn the ways of the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't go study the signs of heaven. Don't get involved in the horoscope. Don't get involved in the card reading. Read. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The other nations are supposed to be doing that. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. So now it's about to go into a custom that has no value. The word vain means what? No of no value. A custom we're not supposed to learn. That's gonna. That's not gonna do anything good for us. Read. For one cutted a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the worksmen, with an axe, with the axe, that they deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So now, what holiday on earth that a man goes in the forest, cut down a tree? Decorate with silver and gold and fasten it in his house. Christmas. The Bible say, do not learn those ways. There's no profit in them. That's written in the book of Jeremiah. 
So it debunked the holiday Christmas. This is what the Bible is about. Steering you back to the right way of living. This is why a lot of people say, oh, don't read the Old Testament. No, we're supposed to read the whole book. Why is it that every book in every school you go to, you always start from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me the one book that the Lord God gave us in the book that we're supposed to find our salvation, we don't have to read it from the beginning? So that every other book, to understand the book, you must read from the beginning. But the Bible, you start from the middle. That's why you don't understand the Bible. You must start from the very beginning. But let's go to the verse that got people confused. Well, it's not that the verse got people confused. People use it to confuse people because the verse is clear. Matthew 5, 17. Because that is the verse that's used to say, oh, we don't have to keep God's laws no more. Hold up. So if we don't have to keep God's laws, that means I can steal, I can rob, I can kill. Does that make sense? And you would honestly say, no, you can't rob, you cannot steal, you cannot cheat, you cannot uh -uh, kill people. So if we cannot do those things, that means what? The law still stands, like we read before. The law abide forever. Is that people like to nitpick. They want to pick and choose how to serve God. You can't do that. The Bible is the blueprint. You got to adhere to the Bible as it is written. Your opinion of it don't matter. And I'm going to show you that later. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Yes. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So they will close the Bible at this point and say, you see, Christ came and fulfilled the law. Um, let's read it again from the top slowly and let's analyze the scripture. Read it again. Think not. Stop. Think not. What does that mean? Don't even think. Pay attention. Don't even think. Uh-huh. Read. That I come to destroy the law. Don't even put in your head that me, Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Don't even think the reason I came here is to destroy the law. So if I didn't come to destroy the law, I mean the law still stand. Read. Or the prophets. Or what the prophet wrote. I did not come to destroy them. So if Christ did not come to destroy the law, nor the prophets, that means what? We still got to use the Old Testament. Matter of a fact, when Christ was teaching on this planet, what book was he teaching from? Because when Christ walked the earth, the New Testament was not there. He taught from the old. So now after his death, we don't have to use the old no more. That makes no sense. Read it again from the top. Think not that I that I am come to destroy the law uh -huh. or the prophets. So Christ said, I did not come here to destroy the law nor the prophets. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. If fulfill also mean destroyed, then the, the, the whole verse don't make sense. So now let's go in the Bible and find out if there's a part in the Bible that talks about what Christ fulfilled. Give me the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 18. Because we already understand that Christ did not come to do it with the law. Because Christ kept the law. Christ kept the Passover. Christ kept the feast of dedication. He honored his mother and father. He did not break the law. Because this says what? Christ was the only man with no sin. We'll get to that later. Let's read what Christ came to fulfill. Acts 3.18. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. But those things which God beforehand showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. What Christ came to fulfill is the prophecies that were written about him that he had to come and die for his people. That he came to fulfill. Because you have, you still have to keep the law. And I'm going to prove that to you. Give me uh, Revelation 14 and 12. Revelation 14 and 12. This is the last book of the Bible. Christ came to fulfill what was written about him, that he was supposed to die for the sins of his people. But with his own mouth, he said, I did not come to do away with the law. The law still stands. Before you read that, 
There are five categories of law in the Bible. You got civil, moral, ceremonial, sacrificial, and dietary. There's only one place in the Bible you can read about the law being done away with, which is Hebrew 10 and 4. That is the sacrificial laws. We're going to come back to the revelation. Let's just read that real quick. Hebrew. Let's read Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and 4. You're going to read that the sacrificial law would, was done away with because Christ became the sacrificial lamb. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So Christ said the blood of bull cannot take away sin because guess what? You have to do the sacrifice over and over and over and over. Read. Wherefore, then he cometh in the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Christ is the body that was prepared to become the sacrificial lamb. So out of the five categories of laws, the sacrificial laws were done away with. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, since we bring that up. Give me Malachi. Malachi chapter uh, 3. No, chapter 2. Verse, uh, no, no, let's get straight to this. Give me Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Remember, we just read, out of the five categories of laws, only one category was done away with, which is the law of sacrifice. You with me? Follow up, pay attention to this. Take notes on this. The church teaches that all the laws are done away with. But yet, they collect tithe. Well, tithing was part of the law of sacrifice. But Hebrew 10 tells you the law of sacrifice is done away with. So well, if the law is done away, like they say it is, why they still collect tithe? Read that. The book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 8. Will a man rob God? Uh -huh. Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Mm -hmm. In tithing, tithes and offerings. In tithing and offerings, they say we rob God. That verse is used all day in the church to collect money. Go ahead. Ye, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring so, ye, go ahead, finish that verse. I finished. No. Bring, bring ye all the tidings into the st storehouse. Bring ye all the tidings in the storehouse. You use a storehouse to store food. Tithing was always food. Okay? To not dwell on it, let's go to Deuteronomy 12. Because that's a whole different uh, topic. But since we mentioned it, I'll, I'll just briefly touch it. Give me Deuteronomy 12. Uh, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 14, verse 22. I just want to prove to you that tithing is the part of the law of sacrifice. And the sacrificial laws is done away with. Then we'll come back to the civil, moral, and dietary laws and so forth. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Thou sh shalt surely tithe, tithe. Thou, thou shalt surely tithe. All in the increase of thy seed. All the increase of thy seed. Read. That the field bringeth forth year by year. That the field bring forth year by year. That means what? Tithing was what? Food and animals. It was part of the sacrificial law. Based on Hebrews 10 and 4, sacrifice, sacrifice, the sacrificial law is done away with. Therefore, tithing is done away with. So how is it that the church collect tithes, but if they tell you the law is done away with? That's just food for thought. You could meditate on that. But now let's go back. Let's go to uh, 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 Revelation. Revelation 14 and 12. Revelation 14 and 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience of the saints. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Here are they that do what? Here are they. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Read. And the faith of Jesus. So to get salvation as the saints, you're supposed to keep the commandment in the faith of Christ. Keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. This is the book of Revelation we're reading. 
Let's go to Matthew 19, verse 16. Let's hear it straight from Christ's mouth. Let's see what Christ says, what you have to do to inherit life. It's not just, oh, I believe in Jesus and, that, and that's it. No, to believe require actions. Because if I said today, I believe I'm going to be a doctor in eight years, then the action that has to take place is that I have to go to med school and study. I can't just say I believe in Christ and then I'm going to be saved. That's it. Let me go about and sin all day and in the nighttime just get on my knees and say, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive my sins. Forgive your sins. What sin, my son? You don't even know what sin is. But we'll get back to sin again. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? So like, this man wanted to have eternal life. Like every one of us, we want eternal life. So he asked Christ, what should I do to get eternal life? Let's see what Christ answered him. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. So if you want to enter into everlasting life, pay attention, people. Write it down. Take notes. You're not going to remember. Read. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. That's what we just read in Revelation. Here are the faith of the saints that keep the commandment in the faith of Christ. Keep the commandments. Read. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. So Christ is quoting a few of the commandments he got to keep. Don't kill. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. You married. You stay with your woman. Stop going outside of your marriage and have sex. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Don't steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't bear false witness. Don't lie unto people. Don't lie on God. Don't lie on the Bible. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Give honor to your mom and your father. That way you can live a long life. Go ahead. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, there's a misconception because they say, you know, Christ changed everything. He just gave two great commandments. Love the Lord uh, thy God and love your neighbor as thyself. So now the question is, how do I love? Is it a hug and a kiss? Give me 2 John 6. Is it a hug and a kiss? How do I love God? How do I love my neighbor? What is love? Because we get confounded. Oh, you know, just bring flowers and roses. That's not love. There are men who bring flowers and roses to their wives and still cheating on them. Giving people hug and kiss and spending money on them, that's not love. Read. The book of 2 John, chapter 6. Verse 6. Verse 6. And this is love. We're going to let the Bible tell you what is love. And it says, and this is love. Go ahead. That we walk after his commandments. That we do what? That we walk after his commandments. That we walk after his commandment. Because the way for me to love my brother as I love myself is that what? I got to apply what's written in the commandment, which says what? Thou shalt not covet anything that belongs to your brother. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Bear no false witness. That's how you love your brother. The way to love God, let's read. Uh, did, you, did you finish that? Uh, no. Re yet. Read it. And this is love, uh -huh. that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning... Th you should walk in it. The commandment that you have heard from the very beginning. Now, this is New Testament. So if it's talking about a command that we've heard from the beginning, where do you find those command? In the Old Testament. So how are you going to tell me I'm not supposed to read the Old Testament when the New Testament is telling me to read the Old and the New always mention the Old, always refer to verses from the Old. Give me First John 5 and 3. Because the two greatest commandments to love your brother, right? We just show you how to love your brother. Let's see how you love God. The book of First John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God. For this what? 
For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Let's see what the love of God is. Go ahead. That, that we keep his commandments. The same exact thing. That we keep his commandments. Go ahead. And his commandments are not grievous. It is not grievous to keep God's commandment. What is so grievous about not taking the Lord's name in vain? What is so grievous about remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy? What is so grievous about those? The first five commandments deals with honoring God. When you read the Ten Commandments, the last five deals with how you deal with your brothers. So that's civil law and moral laws. They're not done away with. The ceremonial laws are not done away with. Because you've never, you probably never heard that we have to keep the new moon. You probably say, new moon, what is that? Well, let me enlighten you. Go to Isaiah real quick. Because you might say, no, nah, that, that's old stuff. You know, we don't have to do it no more. Okay. I'm going to do what the Bible says. You choose to do what you want to do. And let's see where that gets you at the end. Give me the book of Revelation. I mean, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, sorry. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66. We're going to read from verse 23. Actually, before we read that, let's just read the law first. Give me Leviticus 23. Let's, let's, let's set it up with the law. Uh, Leviticus 23, verse 1. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So now, the Leviticus 23 goes into the Lord's feast. It says, give me some uh, 87, which are uh, holy convocation. Holy convocation is what? You're supposed to assemble together. Assemble together to do what? To praise the Lord God. Right? Uh, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Psalms 83. 83, sorry. 83? 81, 81. 81, yeah. So let's see one of the holy convocation. Because we mentioned the new moon, right? Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 80. 81. Verse 3. 81. Verse 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. The scriptures say, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. That means what? We're supposed to have shofars or trumpet. And on the new moon, we're supposed to blow the trumpet in the new moon. Go ahead. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. On, on your solemn feast days. Remember we're in Leviticus 23? These are the solemn feasts of the Lord that we got We got to do what? Congregate in those days. Read. For this was a statue for Israel. For this was a law for Israel. Read. And a law of the God of Jacob. And a law of the God of Jacob. So many people might be like, see, we don't, that's, the, that's, the, that's old stuff. We don't have to keep that again. All right. Now let's go to Isaiah 66 verse 23. Like I said. We don't. We were not raised in our heritage. We were raised in the other nation's heritage, because everything that we do. Just examine yourself, people. I'm gonna name a few things that you would consider your heritage, that you probably celebrate. And my que my question to you is this: Can you show it to me in the Bible? We're going to start with Christmas. Can you show me that in the Bible? It's not in the Bible. Valentine's Day. Fourth of July. Halloween. Thanksgiving. Easter. They're not biblical. But now we call, we're showing you feast days that are biblical, but somehow somewhere in your brain is going, can't compute, can't compute, can't compute. So you tell me. Are you going to listen to God or are you going to listen to men? Because you have no problem celebrating the holidays that men instituted, but the holidays that God gave you, 
You saying they're done away with, and you cannot give me one verse in the Bible that proves that they're done away with. Let's read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 23. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. It says, it shall come to pass, future tense, that from one new moon to the next, from one Sabbath to the next, all flesh is going to come and worship before the Lord God. So hold up. The, the time we're going to be in front of the Lord God is when we're in kingdom. So if we're going to keep the new moon, the new moon was already established on earth as a law. In the kingdom, we're going to be keeping it. So if we're going to keep it in the kingdom, does that mean that we have to keep it here as well? Shouldn't we be practicing right now? Like it says in Judges 5.11, we're going to be rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. You got to meditate on these things. So if you're not accustomed to keeping the new moon here, you chose to do your own thing. Will the Lord accept you up there in the kingdom on the new moon? No. And you might be like, nah, that's not true. He's going to accept me. Okay, let's see. Give me Matthews. Is it seven I want? Yep, 721. Let's get straight to the point. Because we people go to church and they feel like, listen, I'm saved, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Well, let me tell you something. You are not saved and washed by the blood of the Lamb. There's a lot of things that yet you have done that you need to do to be saved, to be delivered from captivity. And this is our job to come and reprove you because all Scripture is given as, as the Word of God to what? For correction, for reproof to the ways of life. It's because we love you. That's why we're on this radio station right now giving you the Word of God. Not because we hate you, because we want to see you saved. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, pay attention. That This chapter right here, should scare you if you say you love the Lord God. You open the Bible and read a verse that says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, 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 is going to enter the kingdom of God. Which means what? There's a lot of people calling on the Lord Jesus that say they are saved and washed by the blood of the land that are not going to enter in the kingdom. Pay attention. Read. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, Many will say. So, hold up. He says, but he that doeth the will of my Father that is in heaven, that's the person that's going to enter. So now you got to ask yourself, am I the one that's just saying, Lord, Lord, Lord? Or am I the one that's saying, Lord, and yet doing the will of the Lord? Now, let's see what is the will of God according to Scripture. And you can... Examine yourself to say, okay, I think I just fall under the one that's just saying, Lord, Lord, because I'm not actually doing the will of God. So from this day forth, because I want to be saved, I got to start doing the will of God as well. It's not all It's not all about singing, dancing, and praying, and singing, and calling on the name of God. There are prerequisites. There are things we must be doing, and we're going to let the Bible speak. Psalm 40 and 8. Let's read that. Let's see what the will of God is. Because in the church, we are not taught the will of God. We are, we are taught to dance and sing and praise you the Lord. But the Bible says you got to do more than that. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, in verse 8. Mm -hmm. I delight to do thy will. I find great delight. I find great pleasure in doing your will. Go ahead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Yea, the law is within my heart. Yea, thy law is within mine heart. Read it again from the top. 
I delight to do thy will, O my God. Mm -hmm. Yea, thy law is within my heart. The law is within my heart. Now, give me Mark 7, 21. So to do God's will is to keep his laws. And his laws must forever be present in your heart. And here's something. Your heart is not the organ in your chest that's pumping blood. You cannot do God's will with the organ that has one function. is to just pump blood in and pump blood out. So let's see, according to the Bible, what is the heart that you're supposed to be using to keep God's laws. Read. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Yep. For, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. The Bible says from within... So the heart is inside you. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. What organ in your body you used to think with? Your brain. All your thoughts come from your brain, not from the organ that's in your chest. So if evil thoughts is in your brain, you need God's laws to combat those evil thoughts. Let's see the evil thoughts that reside in men. Continue reading. Adultery. Adultery. You naturally want to commit adultery. What would prevent you from doing so? The laws of God that say that shall not commit adultery. So no matter how much you feel, how, how, how you feel about keep doing adultery, you're going to have the laws in your mind. You're going to choose to do the will of God and do what's written and not commit adultery. Go ahead. Fornications. Fornication, having sex with all kinds of random people. Go ahead. Murderers. Murderers, hating your brother or literally killing your brother. The Bible said thou shalt not kill. The Bible said thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Anyone that hates his brother in his heart is a murderer. Those are the laws. You're going to choose to adhere to those laws as opposed to your feelings and your thoughts that's in your own head. Read. Theft. Theft, stealing. You see your brother got something, the Bible said thou shalt not steal. You're going to have those laws instead in your head. That's how you do the will of God. Read. Covetousness. Covetousness. You don't covet your, 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 your friend's wife. You don't covet his car. You don't covet his house. You don't covet nothing that pertains to your, to your brother. That's the last commandment. So to do the will of God is actually to do what's written according to the Bible. The laws in the Old and the New Testament. Because the whole book is a book of the law. Go back to Matthews now. Matthew 7. Go back to Matthew 7. Start again from the top from verse 21. So now that you know what the will of God is, it'll behoove you to start studying your Bible and discover more laws because there's not enough time in one hour to go over all the laws that's written in this book. Like the Bible said, it is the book of the law. Like I give you a little pointer. If you read four chapters every day of your Bible, you can complete it in one year. That includes the book that were removed as well, the Apocrypha. We use the King James Version 1611 because he has more books than the regular Bible. Because in the 1600s, when we started learning how to read and write, they, they removed certain books out of the Bible. So if you have the complete Bible, the 1611 King James Version, you read four chapters every day. In one year, you'll complete your Bible. From Genesis to the end, I'll behoove you that you do that. So you may learn what is the will of God and how to really serve God. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Really? But he that doeth the will of my Father, with, which is in heaven. Read. May will, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So on the day that Christ returned. Many people are going to run to Jesus. Yes, Jesus is coming. Lord, Lord, Lord. We prophesied in your name. We did the work. Read. And in thy name have cast out devils. We cast out devils in the church. Go ahead. And in thy name done many wonderful works. W wonderful works. We fed the hungry. We, we open orphanage and give money. Go ahead. And then will I profess and unto them. Christ will profess unto them on that day. Go ahead. I never knew you. Those are the most cold words ever written in this book. It should scare you. It should shake your foundation. 
Because Christ going to answer to some people, I've never knew you, even though you was calling Lord, Lord, every day of your life. Let's see why. Read. Depart from me. He said, remove yourself from me. Go ahead. Ye that work iniquity. Ye that works iniquity. What is another word for iniquity? Sin. He said, depart from me, you that work it sin. So hold up. You're in the church, praising God all day, every day. But yet God says, I don't deal with you because your whole life you've been living in, in sin. So now, as a man of God, you want salvation. You should want to find out what is sin. So you can examine yourself to see, you know what? Let me check myself to see if I'm living in sin. So let's read the Bible, 1 John. Let's read sin. 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. Let's see what is sin. And after we read sin, then you can ask yourself, like, whoa, am I living in sin? Read. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. It said for sin is. The definition of sin is the transgression, which means the breaking of God's laws. So if I'm going to a church where they tell me God's laws is done away with, that church is telling me I can stay in sin. Therefore, on the day that the Lord returns, I'm going to be that one running to Jesus talking about Lord, Lord, Lord. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew thee. Ye that worketh iniquity, because I never paid attention to God's laws. Because I allow a man to teach me that God's laws is done away with. Not knowing that in the last day there shall be many false Christs and false prophets. You think a false prophet is going to teach you to keep God's laws? The Bible says in the book of Revelation, take heed that no man take your crown. How would a man take your crown? By teaching you false doctrines. By teaching you what's not written in the book. Now, your choice is yours. What you going to do? Because when you read in the book of Acts 5, uh, 21 or 29. Let's read that. Acts 5, 29. Acts 5, 29. Let's see what the Bible says to do. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The, the apostle says, We ought to obey God rather than men. The Bible says sin is breaking of God's laws. So if I want to not be in sin, I must be adhering to the laws of God. Period. Let's go to Revelation again. This time we're going to go to the very last chapter. We're going to start at verse 13. No, yes, no, 12. Let's start at verse 12. Now, this is the last chapter. This is the last warning. So if you don't want to listen to it, that's entirely your problem. But you can't say, I never heard or I did not know when Christ returned. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, and verse 12. Mm -hmm. And behold, I come quickly. Christ said, I'm coming very quickly. Read. And my re reward is with me. Christ is coming to give reward. Go ahead. To give every man according to his work. To give every man according to what? Uh, to give every man according to his work shall be. So, your, your reward is going to be according to your work. Now, we come from this world. And if there's a tournament and everybody, let's say a, a soccer tournament, do every team get a, reward, get, a, get a trophy? No. The winners get trophies. Everybody don't get a, a good reward with Christ. He's coming to give reward, but let's pay attention. Read. I am, the, I am Alpha and Omega. Uh-huh. The beginning and the end. That's Christ speaking. Listen very carefully. 
Read. The first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are who? Blessed are they that do his commandments. This is in the New Testament. It said you will be blessed if you do God's commandments. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. And in doing so, you will have the right in the tree of life. Eternal life. Christ speaking. Listen. And may enter into, into thou the gates into the city. And may enter into the gates of the city. The gates of the city. To enter in, you must be keeping God's commandments. Read. For without are dogs. Outside of the gates. Those who's not going to enter are dogs. Those are the other nations. Read. And sorcerers. And sorcerers. Where do you find that you were not supposed to be a sorcerer? In the law of God. Read. And whoremongers. Where do you find that you're not supposed to be a whoremonger? A man that goes from men, I mean from women to women. In the laws of God. Read. And murderers. Where do you find that you're not supposed to kill? In the laws of God. Read. And idolaters. Where do you find that you're not supposed to worship idols, statues? In the laws of God. Read. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Where do you find that you're not supposed to lie one to another and not lie on God's words? In the laws of God. So outside of the gates of the kingdom are going to be those who chose not to keep God's laws. Read. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. So I, Jesus, sent my angels. Angels are what? Messengers. He sent the messengers to testify this thing, to teach you these things in the churches. Read. I am the root and the offspring of David mm -hmm. and the bright and morning star. Jump to, uh, no, just keep reading. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that hear it say, come. And let him that is authorized come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Go ahead, read. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Pay attention to this part. If any man shall add unto these things, uh -huh. God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. this book. Christ said with his mouth. If you add anything unto his words, he's going to add unto your plagues. Well, last I checked, some people added Christmas into the words. Some people added Easter into the word. Because Easter is in the honor of worshiping the god Ishtar, who was a fertility god. This is why you have bunnies on Easter. They're very fertile. This is if you have all the eggs, the Easter eggs has nothing to do with Christ. Men, many men have added unto the word of God. Therefore, on the day of redemption, God will add on their plagues. Read. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. So, the book of life is where all the names of the righteous souls are written. That's going to have eternal life. Christ says, if you take away anything from this book that is written, then I'm going to take your name away from the book. Last I check, churches, I don't see churches keeping the new moon. I don't, keep, I don't see churches keeping the feast of dedication, which Christ kept. So that means what? That's just two things I mentioned. Many things were taken away from the Bible. So therefore, their crown will also be taken away from them. Because let's go to the book of John. I'm going to show you that Christ kept the Feast of Dedication. And you ask yourself, around the same December, when you are keeping Christmas, which is in honor of a pagan god named Nimrod, okay, that's his death and so-called resurrection, that's what you're celebrating. Around that same time, you were supposed to be keeping what? The Feast of Dedication. But somebody took away the Feast of Dedication and add Christmas. 
Read that. The book of John, chapter 9, verse 42 or 22? Uh, uh, John 10, 22. 10, 10, 10, 22. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So during the feast of dedication, Christ was in the temple keeping the feast of dedication with everybody else. You say you're a Christian. You say you are anointed. You're supposed to be following Christ's example. Have you ever kept the feast of dedication? Do you even know about the feast of dedication? No, you don't. Because the only other place you're going to read about it is in the book of Maccabees, which is part of the apocrypha that they removed from the Bible. But Christ kept that feast. Take heed. Let anyone should spoil you to vain philosophies and doctrine. Uh, last scripture, right? Mm -hmm. Second Ezra 7, 20. Second Ezra 7, uh, verse 20. Come on now. We press for time. Any day. So the point is this, what, what we've been showing you throughout this whole book, you must keep God's laws in the faith of Christ. You need both. Read. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 20. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God that is set before them. Many of us are going to die because we hate God's laws. Read. For God have given straight commandment. God has given straight. S-T-A-I-T. -T, narrow. Straight commandment. To such as king. What they should do to live. So God give you straight commandment so you may know what to do to live. Go ahead. Even as they came. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. And what you got to observe to avoid punishment. So the laws of God were set as a blueprint for you to follow on how to really serve the Most High God in the name of His Son, Jesus the Christ. So we pray that you did get something out of this class and come and repent and change your ways and do the will of God according to as it is written. All right? With that, we're going to say shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.